What's going on everyone? Today we are taking a look at the Angway Engine Pro, which is a folding fat tire e-bike. Taking a look at the specs, this bike has a 750 watt motor, a 48 volt 16 amp hour battery, 20 by 4 fat tires, a front and rear suspension, 160 millimeter hydraulic brakes, a 8 speed Shimano shifter, and weighs 83 pounds. Same as most bikes, there really wasn't much to the assembly. You simply had to install the front wheel and fender, pedals, and the handlebars. Very simple, and regardless if you know about bikes or not, this was easy enough for anyone to do. Inside the box, you also get an accessories box, which has your toolkit, the manual, the charger, and your pedals. So taking a look at the bike itself, this bike is actually a lot larger than I thought it would be. When you see it in photos, it kind of looks like it'll be a smaller moped style kind of bike, but this is a pretty big bike. Not only that, but the handlebars on this bike are some of the tallest bars I've used on any bike so far. All in all, it's definitely a unique and different design from most other e-bikes. So as I said earlier, this bike does have a dual suspension. It has a front hydraulic fork suspension. Then in the middle of the bike, you have a very unique rear suspension as well. It looks like it should work pretty well, but we'll find that out when we go on a ride shortly. Taking a look at the lights, this bike does include a front and rear tail light, and the tail light also lights up when you press the brakes as well. Another cool thing is this bike has a built-in ambient light sensor, so similar to a car, when it gets dark out, the lights will automatically activate on their own. Coming around to the bars, you have a nice looking color screen, which also has good brightness and resolution as well. At the bottom of the screen, you also have a USB port, which I love having because this will let you charge your phone or other devices while you ride. A unique feature to this bike is before you can ride it, you actually need to insert your key and turn it to the on position. Otherwise, if you don't put the key in the bike and try to turn it on, it's just not going to do anything as the power is disabled. This is a pretty cool feature that I have not seen on any other e-bike. Lastly, this bike does include metal fenders, which are nicely painted to match the color of the bike. Then you also have a nice heavy duty rear rack as well. So this bike is a folding e-bike and to fold it, you simply release this lever on the bars and then the whole bar will drop down, then release the other lever at the center of the bike and this will let you fold the bike in half. This is really convenient for someone like me that doesn't have a bike rack as now I can just fold the bike and put it in the back of my wife's SUV. The battery is mounted inside the down tube so to remove it, you do need to fold the bike as well. All right, so first and foremost, if you're someone who wants a bike where you can pedal it and use the motor, this is definitely not the bike for you. This, this bike has the most resistance of any e-bike I've tested so far. And that's because the rear motor has a magnetic resistance to regenerate, regen power. So as you're pedaling, it's creating energy and charging your battery back up, which is very cool on its own. But if you want to pedal this bike on its own, without the motor, it's definitely a lot of resistance and after a few minutes you're going to be exhausted and tired out so if you get this bike this is definitely e-bike only all right so if you're on zero everything is completely disabled you have no pedal assist and you can't use your throttle either until you go to number one that's when things are unlocked all right so these bars are definitely high up this view is similar to an electric scooter Kind of with the riding style that i am right now oddly enough you can actually adjust this to go higher i don't know why you'll want it to go higher than it already is maybe if you're like six foot five or seven foot or something then maybe but for most regular riders i think it would be great to have the privilege to go lower because i think somewhere around this height will be a lot more normal and more comfortable so if they were to put this adjustment neck right down here or something i think that'll make the bike a lot more versatile but as of now, yeah, that's the very bottom it can go. Definitely high bars. But uh, after I've rolled this for a while now, it's not too bad. It's definitely a very comfortable ride. It feels similar to like a cruiser bike. There's no pressure on your arms. You're kind of just chilling on top there, relaxing your arms. So not my favorite bars, but Definitely comfortable and if you want a more relaxing ride, I can see how it works for a lot of people. All right, so pedal assist one, casual pedaling. Looks like we're getting about 6.5 to seven miles per hour. Switch it up to number two. 
One thing cool about this bike is besides the pedal assist speeds, you also have three different modes. You have sport mode, eco mode, and normal mode. So depending on where you have it set, that's gonna be the amount of torque and how quickly it's gonna push you along. For testing purposes, we're gonna switch it back to sport mode. All right, so pedal assist two, nine miles per hour. Going uphill here, so I'm not gonna count this. All right, pedal assist three, 13.4 miles per hour. All right, so I don't know if you guys can hear that, and most likely you can, but there's like a little sh 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 shaky, shaky noise. And when I first rode this bike, it was a lot worse than that. But I did some research on the forums and Facebook. Turns out the fender, it's in a very tight gap of where it's at. So you need to either pull it down or add like rubber or something on the sides of it. And once you do that, the noise will go away. I pulled mine down and it cut the noise down about 70%. But between 12 and 14, between 12 and 14, 12 and 15, that's where the noise happens. And then above that and below that doesn't happen. But I guess something about that area causes a vibration that makes it make that noise. But if you have that noise, it's not your motor like I originally thought it was. It's just the fender rubbing against the frame. So either just adjust it or add like tape or something rubber next to it so it's not coming in contact with the bike frame. When I first rode this bike last week, it was much, much louder. Every time I went to 12 to 15 miles per hour, I was like embarrassed to be at that speed because people were turning around looking at me not because of the bike but what is that noise and it was just a very awful noise to hear it sounded very jalopy but after some research found out it wasn't actually a problem with the motor so that's good all right let's go ahead and try out pedal assist four see now you can hear it a lot more and then it goes away oh those pedaling really bad there all right if i shift up Decent resistance. Okay, it looks like this may not be accurate. Over there it said about 19 miles per hour, and over here it's showing about 21. So I would say remove about two to three miles per hour off the reading. It looks like we're getting 21.9 on pedal assist four. All right, pedal assist five, see what we can get. This bike has a lot of torque. Once that motor kicks in, you feel it just pushing you forward, no problem. It shows right now we're hitting 999 watts. Might even be pushing a thousand, but I don't think it's able to show. Yeah, it can't show more than that. So might be pushing a thousand and something. Looks like we peaked at about 28.2, but it was uh, most of the time about 27, upper 27s. As I said earlier, that uh, speed sign over there was showing about a two mile difference. So top speed on this bike is probably about 25, 26-ish. Ooh, that's some power though. It's a loud motor, but oh, does it doesn't push you. All right, let's see if I gun it. Actually, no, nope, I'm not gonna gun it. I think that's the cops. Yep, that's the cops. All right, don't want to get in trouble for breaking the speed limit on the bike. But uh, now that they're gone, back to our test. All right, let's try throttle only. See, now you can hear that noise. Right between that 12 and 15, you hear that vibration. Ran out of space, but topped out there at 25.3. Uh, I need to find the road. It doesn't have another stop sign so close. A loud motor. Twenty six point five. It did feel like it was around the top. So I'm gonna say it's about the same as uh, where you top out on pedal assist, about twenty seven, upper twenty sevens. Yeah, so as far as power goes, this bike has the end some. This, this is definitely a very torquey motor. 
Let's go ahead and test out these brakes. Oh, good. Nice and gravity brakes as well. Able to grab those wheels and stop me with ease. So, love to see that. And they're also very quiet. You do hear a little bit of the rubbing against the rotor, but that's normal. But there's none of that some of these bikes have when they need to get broken in. So brakes as well, very good. So one other thing I'm not a fan of is the part of how you have to put the key in the bottom of the bike. To start this bike, you need to put the key in. And honestly, I would have been okay with that if it was up here somewhere or even on top of the down tube. But the fact that it's on the bottom of the bike, I feel like it might fall out on me. I mean, it seems locked in there, but there's always that thing in the back of my mind that I might end up at home and I lost my key. And then another part I don't like about it is typically I'll just carry my bike key and throw it in my bag and I'll have it at the carabiner. But now every time I want to use this bike, I got to take the key off the ring, take it off the carabiner and then put it in the bottom of the bike. Then when I'm done with it, put the key back. So it's, it's a bit tedious. I would hope that maybe like on their future models now that a lot of bikes have bluetooth that they'll make something if they want to do a security feature like that they could just have it where the app links up and you could just press it on the app to unlock the bike with bluetooth and i think that'll be a lot more convenient than having to use the key but other than that this is a very very solid bike i love the power i love the torque brakes work really well uh, i've seen some people online actually twist change this out and put like bmx style bars on here and it looks very nice i'm sure that rides a lot more comfortable as well so that's always something you can do to tailor this bike to your needs a little more as well so this is a 16 amp hour battery on their website they rated at 62 miles of range again like most other e-bikes you're not going to get that unless you're really 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 being easy on the throttle and pedaling very slow and casually with that uh, battery size and my previous experiences with other bikes that I've tested with the top range, uh, I'm going to say you're going to get about 30 to 40 on average riding. Might get a little more if you're going really slow, but 30 to 40 with average riding. And then if you're going faster, you're probably going to get about that 15 to 25 miles, depending on how fast you're going. But overall, it's pretty solid. I think it's a nice battery size. 20 amp hour is my preferred battery is i like to ride longer ranges but i think a large percentage of the population don't ride as far and as long as i do so i think for most people 13 to 16 amp hours is like a nice sweet spot to have enough range that you won't get range anxiety and then 10 and below that's in my opinion more for shorter rides or shorter commutes but definitely a nice battery size nice motor a few things I don't like about this bike that I mentioned in the video, but overall it's definitely a very solid bike for the price. All right, well that about wraps up this video. As usual, if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop me a comment and let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.